In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this as your habit tracker to something like this. So let's jump into the computer. So now that we're in the computer, this is the current habit tracker that I've been using and that I built at the beginning of the month that I want to share with you. Now, I want to start off this video by saying that I know this is not the general type of content that I put out. I usually do more of like casual self-improvement talks and like motivational videos, I guess. But... I think there's still some massive value to be provided here. And if you're new here, definitely hit the subscribe if you're interested in self-improvement and hit the like button if you find any of this information helpful. So let's get right into it. So first things first, you're gonna wanna create a new sheet, have a blank canvas here. And the first order of business is we're gonna add some columns because if you go A to Z, you know, there's only 26 letters in the alphabet and we're gonna want at least 31. So if you're inserting columns, get up to AG, if you wanna include also like a total column, like I have here, like I have this uh, total count. So, so insert columns up until AG, and then we should be good to get started. I'm gonna make this habit tracker for 2023, since I already have my 2022 one up. And in A1 cell, we're going to write, January 2023 and this could be whatever date you want or whatever month you want so as long as you write the month and then the year you should be good to go and one thing you might want to notice is that in the function bar it's going to result a date not what you typed of January 2023 so this is important in understanding how the functions are going to work but if you don't care about that then don't worry just know that you should write January 2023. And if you're trying to change the months in the future, you can write the month and then the full year. Make sure you write out the four digit year, not the two digit, because if you do this, you're gonna have this year and then the 23rd, and that's gonna just screw up your calendar. So you don't wanna do that. Make sure if you're writing the date, either write January 2023 or write the date like this or the, just the month and the year so that's first step up here in the row of one we're going to do we're going to have our days up here so this is going to be one two three four five six seven but instead of you know like writing every single month one two three instead of doing that we are going to use formulas so just have the basic understanding that this is going to be where our days are going to go. This is going to be where our habits go in the column of A. So for my habits, I want to exercise. I want to read. I want to journal. I want to make a YouTube video. I want to code and I want to learn Spanish. So this is what I have in my other habit tracker. And these are the habits that I want to do every single day. So write down whatever habits you want down here, and then we'll get into how to create the interactive feature of the dates. Since we have our habits here, could select all of these all the way up till AF, and then we can insert, we're gonna insert a checkbox, right? So this is gonna be where you tick off whether or not you completed your habit for the day. So with that done, we are going to write in formulas in order to create the dates. You hit the equal sign in here, and then you we're gonna use the day formula here. You can hit tab or do an open parentheses, and we're gonna choose this as the day, right? A1, that is the date, which would be returning January 1st, just here. It's gonna be returning this, that one. This is what we wanted, right? We wanted the first block to be the first day, but we're also going to absolute reference the column of A. So, you know, if we drag this across, it's going to still be one because it's still referencing this day, right? So that's not what we want. We want to make it so that this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, et cetera, et cetera. So in order to do that, we're gonna do, use the day function again, right? But then we're gonna do A1, and we're gonna absolute reference that as well at least we're gonna absolute reference the column. We're gonna absolute reference this column. And then we are going to add 
the previous day, right? No absolute reference there because as we slide across, it's going to populate the days automatically. So here we can move the formula across, right? This is working as expected from one up to nine, up to 13. So it's basically just auto populating the same formula in the cells. All right, perfect. So there's 31 days in the calendar year of, or in the calendar month of January, 2023. And this is exactly what we want. Going up to AG, if we put this as our total, this is a perfect amount of days that we needed for the month. But if we take this and we make this February 2023, there are only 28 days in February 2023, right? So if we keep going down, look at this, 28, 1, 2, 3 at the end. So that's not what we want because we want it to stop at 28 and not go into the next mar month because this would represent March. So in order to do that, we got to change up our formula a little bit. So instead, we're going to use the day function, right? We're going to do the same thing, A1, and then we're going to absolute reference the column plus the day right before, so that's going to be 1. So that's going to represent 2, right? But then we also want to make it so that if, the, if it goes to the end of the month out here, then it's going to be blank, and we don't want it to go over, you know, 28 if it's February. We don't want it to go 28, 1, 2, 3. So in order to do that, we're going to use an if statement here. So if this day that we have, if it's greater than one, we will return the day. So we could just take this actually here, copy that, control C and paste it there. So that's going to return if the day is greater than one. But if it's not greater than one, we can just return an empty string and that should end it off. So here we have again, two, three, four. And if we drag this all the way across, all the way down to A, F, look at that, 28. And then it stops here, stops here, blank, blank, right? So this is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. And if we change this back to January, 2023 you could see that it goes back there's 28 29 30 31 so let's let's uh clean this up a little bit i'm going to make this first of all centered and then i'm going to make it so it looks like this right so you can see it all on one sheet and it's not all spread out so in order to do that you can just like click right here you can double click there and then it'll auto size the width of the column to the widest thing in that column, if that makes sense. All right, now it's almost all done. All we have to do is include the function for the total here. So then it'll result, you know, if I, if I exercise three times in the month, for one, that'd be pretty bad, but for two, it would, we'd want it to report three here. So in order to do that, we're gonna use a formula, count if. So count if this row, if this row returns true, we will count it. And you know, a checkbox, if it's empty, it's false. See, if I just click on here, this is gonna return true. But if I go over to the left one, it's gonna be false because it's empty. So if we, you know, click this one, click this one, click this one, there it is. The three adds up automatically depending on how many you click. And then we can just drag this down to autofill for other ones. So we'll just click some random ones here, see if they count. And look at that. At the end of the month, these are your totals. And you could like track it as you go, see how many times throughout your month you've been on a certain habit you could see which one you've been the most successful with and yeah this is basically the template and outline of the habit tracker now you can you know customize it as you wish choose the different colors i'll just do something pretty pretty basic for now and then there it is and now all you have to do is copy this 
you know, you paste it here. This is the second month, third month, fourth, fifth. You get it all the way up till December. And then all you have to do is change to 2023. That's February. And then it changes the dates here, right? You see that? This is going to be 3, 2023. 31 days in that month, I guess. 4, 2023. Only 30 days, so then it only gives you that amount. 5, 2023. All right, and then say you wanted to like add a different habit or add another habit throughout your year. So say these were my habits in January, but then now it's March and I wanted to, you know, learn how to dance or something. I could insert a row above. It'll give me a row of checkboxes. I think I just have to drag this down and then there you go. Now it'll count and, you know, dance. And now if I add three times I danced throughout the month, there you go. It checks off three times. So pretty helpful. You can add things at your own will and as you go along throughout the year. And this is my version of an interactive habit tracker using Google Sheets. So if you enjoyed and if this was helpful, definitely leave a like. If you're new here, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.